I have a pretty varied background. I've uh, ran a, in the past, I've ran a property management company, one of the biggest in Minnesota here. And my claim to fame with that was that I got in early, this was years ago, got in early with SEO. So um, we, we really dominated the market uh, because of uh, early on I saw the opportunity for SEO. This is probably pre maybe 2000, uh, maybe 2003, 2004. And we became one of the, the number one property management companies in Minnesota because we dominated SEO. If you wanted a rent to own or rental property, owner finance property, we showed up everywhere. And that really kind of started me on the, the digital marketing kind of forefront. We, I, I then started a company called UBrand Inc. where we focus on digital marketing, business development. And on a whim, actually in a weekend, I created a, a um, I was working with developers and, and I wanted a curation product. And uh, remember this one developer said, look, it's not possible what you want to do with WordPress. And I've always had a development background. Uh, I didn't get into that in my background, but I did. And uh, in a weekend, I built a product called Curation Traffic. Put it on the market on Monday, and it sold. And for a while, we, um, we had our business development uh, slash digital marketing agency here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we had this product called Curation Traffic. And Curation Traffic was doing well, but I always saw an opportunity for something uh, that was uh, a little bit more serious, positioned a little bit better, uh, had a lot more features and functionality, and, and really it was the product that I wanted. And that's when we really looked at what are we doing in our business. And about three and a half years ago, we pretty much shuttered our digital marketing business and we focused solely on Curation Suite. And that's when we built from the ground up Curation Suite. And it was a plug-in at first. And we really kind of, we, we've expanded into a full kind of content discovery platform. Uh, we're really making it the backbone of everything that we do. So. We, um, we've been solely focused on Curation Suite as a, as a business here the last couple of years, and it's really the future of what, we, um, what, what we're, we're focusing on. And, you know, I, I'm, I mentioned much of that because a lot of, lot of what, I, what I put into the tool, a lot of where the direction of the tool goes, a lot of what we train, a lot of what we teach comes from actually doing this, right? Just like you guys, you guys actually do the stuff that you guys teach. Uh, you also sell the services, but there's something to be said about actually going out there and having a background in digital marketing and not just uh, a lot of the things that you see in our tool is because I say I want that, right? And it might be just something I want, but then other people that use our tool find it useful. That That's one of the things that I think is, um, is, is kind of, I'd say, set us apart from a lot of other tools out there. We're one of the biggest users of our own tools in many different markets and many different niches and many different ways. Uh, and, and I think that shows in a lot of what we create. Um, and that's also the, the opportunity, I think, for a lot of people with curation. Uh, if it, everything I've kind of covered makes sense so far. I know mm -hmm. I, don't, I see you guys, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm going off the expectations of what you guys cover in these, uh, these masterminds. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's good. good. Yeah. So, so that leads me to curation. If you're not if, if you're not sure what curation is, if you're if you're unsure what curation is, I'm sure most of your audience is because they seem to be very sophisticated. Curation really is just citing a story. You see a story out there, you see a video out there, and then you put it on your website. Um, I say website because a lot of people think about curation in the social realm, and I always say that's the second thing or the third thing or the fourth thing that you actually should do. Uh, your most important asset that you have is your own platform. And we'll get into an advanced topic here, but really one of the, the most, the, the best ways that we're monetizing, that we're teaching people to monetize is to get people to your platform so you can retarget them. Uh, because really that's where the conversion happens. And in, in the bare essence of what curation is, is that you see a story, you see a video, you create a post or, or a piece of content on your website and you hit publish. Now, there's a couple things that you want to add to that to add value. And I'll talk about more of that here and, and kind of some secrets about curation. But it's also one of the easiest ways to publish content. Uh, because it, number one, it's if anybody has created content out there, you know that it's usually tough because you have to come up with the topic yourself. 
you have to maybe sit down and craft out or outline the topic. You have to edit it. You have to kind of go through that whole process of creating the post. And it usually has to be, what, 700 to 1,000 words, maybe 500 to 1,000 words, right? Mm -hmm. With curation, one of the reasons why I really like it and I really suggest it to anybody that just gets started, or even if, if, if you, you do have blogging but it's a great addition, is that it's such a lightweight way to publish content. The the topic is already decided for you. It's already there. It's really your role as the curator to then add your own thoughts, add your own commentary, add your own insight to that. And uh, there'll be a, I'll share in the later end of this, I'll share a, a secret about curation that, um, that, that probably will surprise most people on here. I'll, I'll share really what the true secret of curation is. And if you really want to have true success with curation, you want to knock it out of the park, I'll, towards the end here, I'll share a secret that will really will put you in the top 1% of curators out there in the world. Awesome. But that's when, when if you're struggling, one of the, the questions that are or one of the, the things that I always like to cover is if, you're, if, if you want to publish more content, if you want more traffic, if you want a more engaged audience, one of the best ways to do that is with curation because it is a lightweight type of publishing. And like, and if I go back to the point I just made, the, the topic is already chosen for you. All you have to do is really add to that, and you're already servicing people. You're, you're already giving people what they want. You're already giving people. Uh, so, for instance, in, in our listening engine, we, we've designed a, a listening platform that's very social-focused, meaning that you can sort content by social shares. So you could say, show me the content that has the most Facebook shares in the last 24 hours. Well, you could pick the top three posts from, from whatever comes up, and you can already reason that, hey, that has shown in the last 24 hours this is popular content, right? Mm -hmm. So then all you really have to do is then find a way to work that content into your own sales funnel, into your own messaging, into your own thoughts, into however you want to position that into your site. Cool. I'm glad you brought this up, actually, because um, I've been a long-time user of Curation Suite, but I hadn't... Oops, sorry, we got feedback somewhere. There we go. Uh, of the listening engine, which I'd heard about. So I appreciate you bringing this up, and by all means, if you want to talk some more about that. I mean, I, I'm curious if nobody else is now, uh, So as we go on. It sounds like almost so, like a listening engine. Is that kind of sort of like what BuzzSumo is? Yeah, so, you know, the way that I look, like to... Our, our tool is like a mix between Feedly and BuzzSumo okay. is the kind of way to look at it. It's, it's very social focused. But BuzzSumo, we still use BuzzSumo because BuzzSumo has a lot of data. And it, they, I mean, there's some ninja things that you can do with BuzzSumo that you can't do without tool. They keep all the historical data of tweets, of people that tweet stuff. That is a gold. That's pure gold for people that engage on Twitter. Um, so our tool is kind of a mix between, but... But we, we made a, a focus early on. We're expanding that a little bit that we're, we're going to base a lot of our discovery on the social data because that's kind of the stuff that you actually want anyway. So, for instance, we have a proprietary trending algorithm, and what it does is it looks at how you've set up your listening engine, and then it says, and it says this piece of content or this content here is trending, meaning that it hasn't quite, um, you know, it, it hasn't quite, I won't use the, I hate the word viral, but it hasn't quite hit that, maximum to where everybody knows about it in your market, right? So that's a that's an example of the, you could only really get that data by pulling in social data, by pulling in comments data, by pulling in some Moz score data, a few other things like that, and, and combining that and then displaying it in a way that makes it easy to publish. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our tool, you know, one of the things that our tool is and it is that we're WordPress first. So we're really focused on how do we how do we create a tool that has you in your WordPress dashboard but that allows you to publish quicker, right? So so that's one of the biggest differentiator between us and other tools. What's kind of nice about um, I'd say basing your content discovery on social data is that you're using the hive mind of your market. You're using the hive mind of our of how you set up your listening engine to kind of tell you or, or provide you with opportunities to then create a curated piece of content, 
to then release something that's already been kind of shown to be popular. So for instance, today I was on a, a quick start call and a, and a story popped up about Facebook and how Facebook, um, you can only promote content if you have a, uh, not a trusted page, but a verified page, right? So this is a story that hasn't po popped up in tech meme yet. Um, it might, maybe it's not big enough for it, but there's a lot of, it, it popped up in our listening engine, I'd say about seven hours probably before I saw it on a couple different sites. That's a story that we publish on our, on our site, you Brand Inc., because our audience likes that type of stuff, and that gets us into the conversation, right? That gets us into the, the, the persona of the person that buys our product or our service. So it's, it's that type of opportunity, you think that a... Uh, in some ways, I um, I don't cringe. What's the right word for this? I'm amazed at the content that creates conversions, right? And so I know I'm bouncing around here a couple times or a, a bit, but I'm always amazed at uh, we we have a software product, so we get to see uh, we have agencies, we have SEO experts, we have coaches, we have anybody underneath the sun have use our tool, and it gives us a, a good kind of seat at content, uh, at publishing. And I'm always amazed to see kind of the content that really does go out there and, and, and get traffic or the content that really does create conversions. Hmm. And what I've, what I've reasoned this down to, and hopefully someone gets, some this, gets something from this, is that the more you publish, the more variety of content you publish, the more you're going to have success with content marketing. That's really what I've, from everything that I've seen uh, across years of watching this kind of from the front lines and us doing it ourselves, I'm amazed. Sometimes, like we published a, a post yesterday, I did an email on cicadas and just that, using that as a kind of the, the, the focal point that cicadas show up a 17, so every, every 17 years and you need to publish content more than 17 years. That piece of content had a couple of videos. I got emails from people that they appreciated the videos. That was a curated piece of content, right? That idea started from our listening engine and then launched into us, turning it into an email, a post that is out there on Facebook, that's out there on Twitter, that's bringing traffic to us, that's converting, right? I, I'm, I'm amazed though, I'm still amazed that off topic content content that I don't think is highly valuable though captures people's attention and that's kind of the power of curation because it's so quick because you can you can see a post once you have your your persona down once you know who you're attracting once you know how to relate that to your market your product or the niche that you're in the sky's the limit on the amount of publishing you can do it's a now now one one question people have is you know is um, I'll, I'll kind of break to, break down some of the key questions people have with curation. Is that fine, guys? Oh yeah, yeah. So, sure. so first up, is it legal? Yes, it's legal because you're using what's called the Fair Use Act, uh, and this it's any country. Basically, I think the only country that is it's not is Spain because they changed the rules on even Google pulled out of Spain. I believe it was Spain because uh, they didn't allow links and snippets or something like that. Something with the law in Spain. But pretty much the ability to cite content, to cite original sources, is all part of all copyright law out there across the world, meaning that you have the ability to cite sources. You do have to be careful, though, on how much you cite, what you cite. Uh, the key, and, and what, what I usually use as a rule of thumb, is that you don't want to cite any more than you have to. Uh, and generally, you're looking at anywhere from 2 to 15 sentences of a piece of content, uh, you're usually in the clear, and that's really what you're doing, anyways. With curation, you're you're looking to cite kind of just the relevant elements. Uh, a good rule of thumb for anybody is that if you don't know what to cite in an article, but you like the general idea of the article, cite the lead, the first two or three sentences. That usually provides on most posts, most articles, anything you see out there, usually that provides the general idea of what that's about, right? It's a great lead in. Uh, so if, if you're wondering what to cite, the next thing is people ask is, is it ethical? Uh, it is ethical. Uh, it's something that every, there isn't a site that you can name, I can almost say, that's popular that doesn't use curation. They don't call it curation. It's called reporting, right? 
uh, from Huffington uh, Post and Mashable and all those. Yeah. You can even go beyond, you know, just the popular sites. Any political site you can name, I, 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 I we can pull it up and there'll be a curation there. I can almost guarantee it. Any, um, any mainstream media site, you can look at it and and you you can say this is reporting, but the way that they're reporting on it is really a curation. They're either citing a video, they're citing another story, or they're citing another report. Now they're not they're not calling it curating because they're a news organization. So, you know, it's it's oftentimes uh, we actually have a download, and if you guys want, I can send it out. If you guys want to send it out, uh, it provides examples from live sites of curation in action, and these are sites from, you know, uh, I'm I'm drawing a blank of what the sites are, but they're popular sites that you would see, and they're not the normal sites like BuzzFeed and Huffington Post. Everybody knows that Huffington Post does curation, but it's it's kind of when you see it from other sites, right? Where, mm -hmm. like, you, you, you're you like, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I get, you know, curation is just reporting on something else. It's just kind of in this, it's its own bucket. Now, I know you guys are in the SEO world, and you're, you're thinking, well, does Google, what does Google say? Um, you know, what do they say about curation? Uh, there's a video that Matt Cutts has done, and all you have to do is search for curation and Matt Cutts, and he talks about curation. He talks about that, uh, if you're just doing, if you're just plopping a bunch of links on your site and just stealing content, well, of course that's bad. That's duplicate content. But if you're actually curating something from a valid source, from a trusted source, and you're adding your own thoughts, you're adding your own insights, we look at this as, as just building your authority around your domain, around what you do. Of course you're going to do that because that's that's what authority figures do and that's what really... And to paraphrase kind of what he says in, in, in the, the video, that's really what authorities do. They, they talk about their subject. They reference other people. They cite other people. So, of course, you're not going to get penalized for that. The key is, are you adding to that? Are you adding value to that? So in addition to kind of the, the citation that you do by using the fair use, you're going to want to add your own thoughts. You're going to want to add what is called commentary. And it's... Commentary is probably it's one of the biggest stumbling blocks people have, but it should be really some of the easiest stuff that you actually put into the curation because that's where you have really the, the opportunity to communicate the value that you provide, to communicate uh, what you provide to your audience and to relate this story to the, this curation that you're doing to your audience to who you're, who, who you're really kind of targeting, who you're looking to actually reach. Um, you know, we have a, so for instance, we have an agency that uses our tool, and they, they have relationships where they do content for these uh, very well-known coaches. I can't name who they are, but they're well-known coaches. And what they do, they use the, they use the listening engine to, they go out there and they find content that is about self-development, personal, whatever this coach is interested in, right? And then what they do is they always, they, they pull a snippet of about two to three sentences, and then they always include in their commentary that they put, which is above the cited text, they always relate it to what that, that coach's main value is, Right? So if you, it's not Tony Robbins, but if it was Tony Robbins, what is Tony Robbins known for? He's known for what? A life improvement, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, personal development or, you know, personal greatness, right? Um, I don't follow much of his stuff, but um, so in, in the, his commentary, while the story is about something, maybe it's about psychology or the, the latest thing in neuroscience, right? And how this... Uh, how if you wake up in a certain way and you do this thing, it'll affect you, your mind, right? In his commentary, in their commentary that they create, it always reinforces the value that he provides. It always, and sometimes they even point specifically a link to something else that is a conversion opportunity. Like Tony often talks about how you can, um, you know, wake up and be productive. I know that's not Tony, but it's someone else. Wake up and be productive. Um, and that's why in module two, uh, two of his course, you know, it talks about this one secret, right? And then they go to the curated content. So, so really kind of 
my my I guess my point in in bringing up this aspect of it is that oftentimes the biggest stumbling block people have with curation is what do I add for my own commentary, and that's where really it should be the easiest stuff because it should be the stuff that you immediately uh, know will connect with your audience. You know will actually resonate with your audience. That is from you. That is your value perspective. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. And something else I was thinking about. Um, oops, sorry about that. The um, use of curation in local markets too, because we do have a lot of people who do national, who do brands. Um, and I'm just curious if if this isn't the case, that's fine. But do you know of anyone, or have you do you have any customers? Have you heard who are using this, uh, who do content curation and maybe local markets, like as um, for like a, a smaller brands, or you know, say like um, like local services type of thing? I, I'm just curious if you yeah, know so, of any. So we have a couple. I have a couple examples. So we have um, we just did a case study, or what I call a highlight, not really a case study, on a site called Ape Online. Dot org and they cover um, they cover Alaska politics and elections in the local Alaska market and then they what they how they monetize their site is they have relationships with local advertisers okay and so they're really focused on they have the listening engine they curate they do really lightweight curation they really don't add a lot of commentary they just point to stories that are covering politics and elections in Alaska Alaska is a very close-knit uh, kind of location, so they've been able to build a really good Facebook following and Twitter following just by doing a curation first strategy. They also every now and then then publish their own kind of unique content or their own uh, editorials, mm -hmm. and this helps them. So being a curation first, that's kind of what they publish on a daily basis. Um, they're very localized, so they're only covering Alaska politics, uh, and then they, they, um, this helps them get traffic to their own editorials helps them sell advertising. We have another site actually is a series of sites. Uh, Long Island Long Island Guides .com, I believe. I'll have to check on that. But um, he has a site on Long Island. And it's a it's kind of a directory site, but he does a curation first strategy. And he also launched another site called Long Island Parents. And so what he does is he publishes curated content all about Long Island. Uh, and then he sells uh, local advertising, and then he also sells uh, submissions to his directory. Hmm. So, uh, and then he's kind of a he's looking to be kind of the premier. What's happening in food, wine, uh, entertainment, politics, gossip in Long Island? Cool. Uh, you know, we have we have. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was saying no, no, cool. That's a great idea. I like that. <laughs> so we just had someone in, in Australia actually. Uh, I don't know. This is selling plumbing. So what what he curates on uh, was basically how tos, uh, how to do things, and so he he curates a lot of. See, this is kind of a, a these are kind of that's a good question to kind of like talk about how you know how do you how do you merge this curation into conversion, right? Um, and th this is the the plumbing example is probably a good example because if you think about plumbing or real estate agent or someone like that. You're in a service, or you're in a business, or you're trying to sell to businesses like that where they don't need you right now, right? So really, your conversion's got to look like I've got to build authority. So th this curation that I'm doing has to serve me twofold. It has to serve me to the, the other nice thing about curation is that it keeps your site active. Yes. And one of the biggest problems people have when they're looking to do SEO or anything else is how do I, I got to publish content, but you know with curation. If you don't publish a lot of content, at least you're publishing content, and it shows the search engines, it shows the social networks, it shows everything else out there that you're being active. It's not a dead site. Um, that's the other reason why I like curation. But that's kind of if you if you have a market where they don't need your service right away, your conversion opportunity has got to be something where you're going to get them to a, either a permission marketing channel, right, like email, or in, in addition, you're going to build authority for your domain for your site. So when you do paid advertising, so when you do SEO, uh, you know your link building, your SEO effort, it pays off even more because you have a living, breathing site. You know nowadays it's not like you can just build. And maybe you guys, uh, my SEO experience isn't as good as it used to be, but you just can't go out and build backlinks. You have to have a site that's actually publishing content. You're, you're yeah. absolutely 100% correct. Part of our any SEO successful any SEO campaign requires content marketing now. 
Yeah, so and that's why curation is, is a really good model for that because number one I have, you know, I have a question if I can interrupt real quick. We sure. do have people who who do uh, foreign market, right? SEO. For example, we have people in France, we have people in Latin America, we have pe people in Portugal and, and Brazil. Uh, what about foreign languages? How well does this work with foreign languages? So that's the one thing, the next thing we're working on towards the end of this year. So our listing engine is very good for English-based languages. Um, our curation suite plugin is very good for foreign languages. And, and in our curation suite plugin, and this without getting too in detail, we, with our plugin, you can find content by keyword from Google News, Bing News, Reddit, Giphy, YouTube, SlideShare, Twitter, and you can search in your foreign language. So a lot of our, our foreign language people that don't do English first, so we have a lot of people in France, I don't know why, but we have a lot of people in France, and they, they use primarily our curation suite plugin, and then our, our listening engine gives you the ability to put in keywords in RSS feeds. Um, the keywords right now are just English-based sites, we're changing that, and then the RSS feeds can be any RSS feed. Um, so most of our, our French people that I know use our site, use our platform, are using RSS feeds as kind of the key content discovery. But, you know, that's the other thing about, I'm sure you guys, I don't know where you guys are located. We didn't get to talk much before, but um, I know everybody's kind of located in a different area, sounds like it. I'm amazed. Uh, I can look at our site stats now because I have the dashboard open. We have someone in Portugal. We have someone in Mexico. We have someone in a flag I don't even recommend, you know, rep or recognize. We have a few people in the United States. We have someone in Australia. These are people on our site right now, right? On our membership site. Um, it, it's amazing to me just like around the world nowadays um, where you're getting traffic, right? Where um, if, if I would have, I would have never guessed 10 years ago that we'd be selling from people in countries I have to sometimes look up, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, you know, a lot of our, a lot of the meetings that I have are from people around the world. Um, so, uh, yeah, our, our platform, the listening engine doesn't do as well outside of English uh, language. Uh, we are working on that, but our, our curation suite plugin, we've, we've nationalized that, uh, nationalized it down to what would allow. So Reddit Reddit doesn't allow you to search in foreign languages for some reason, but um, all our other networks allow you to do in foreign languages. Very cool. Hey, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to expand on a little bit on what you said. You mentioned the plumber earlier. And while I can be honest, I have not used any curation suite tools. I have a team of curators that I trained to manually curate um, for my con. You know, I, I do client services and I own some lead gen sites, so I have a team of curators that manually curate content. And you know, I've got plumbing clients. Most of my clients are in the home services industries that you know, contractors and such. And one of the questions that I often get um, is, how do you come up with content? Like, because people say, well, if you're curating for a plumber's site, how do you come up with enough content for plumbing? And I always like to tell them, well, you don't have to just come up with content for plumbing, which is kind of what you talked about earlier, Scott, is the fact that you can tie pretty much any kind of trending story. It's just about figuring out an angle, number one, to be able to tie it back in. And number two, um, one of the things that we like to do, and we, it's funny, you mentioned that the listening engine is kind of like BuzzSumo and Feedly, because what we use is Feedly to always look for new content that's coming out to curate um, and so like what I'll have my curators do is on for, for a plumber's blog for example is they'll look for like any type of home improvement articles um, or content period it doesn't have to be articles um, and also local news stories so they'll have their Feedly category set up with like you know um, Bob Vila, This Old House, Do It Yourself Network blah 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 looking at all those RSS feeds but then they're also subscribed to the local news stations and local newspapers RSS feeds and any sort of local blogs that way they can curate both home improvement related content as well as any sort of local news story which would tie back into that local business and so you know you're, you're, what you mentioned earlier with um, just being able to tie various types of content back for any type of client like a plumber is just a perfect example because a lot of times people say well you know who the hell how many articles can you write about fixing a leaky faucet well, don't do that. <laughs> Come up with some better ideas. You know, be, go go a bit broader. So, and that's that's that we have a term that we use to call horizontal topics. But I think your point is is actually even even better. If if I was a plumber and I uh, was you know I wanted and I was 
I would use content marketing. I would use curation to to build up authority in my site. What I would curate is number one. It comes from conversion, right? So how am I going to convert people? Well, I want to get people on an email list because what I want is I want to build a relationship with them. I want them to think of me as a plumber, and I want to build a relationship with them where when they have a plumbing issue, a friend has a plumbing issue, or they need plumbing help, they're going to think of me, right? The best way for me to do that is by building a relationship and, and putting that idea in their mind so that they know that. The only way that I'm going to do that, though, is not by talking to them about plumbing. Sounds contradictory. The only way I'm going to do that is by then them liking me as a person, liking who I am, following me, and then making the connection that I'm a plumber. So I know this is a, it's a hard thing for a lot of people because especially uh, I see this a lot too, and this is what we, we try to teach, is that, look, it's not always about what you want. It's, it's about building the relationship. It's about understanding how you can connect your idea, how you can be that, that person, how you can be that authority. Now, for a plumber, you're not an authority. You're just a solution to a problem, right? But if I can get you on an email list as a plumber, and then I can entertain you, I can, I can send you something that is interesting to you about your local area. If I can send you an announcement about the, the latest road closure and how you know this is the best way around it, what do you think? Do you think this is quicker? And we start a conversation or something on Facebook or on our website, right? When, when, you, when you create these type of opportunities, what you're doing is you're, you're becoming, and, and this is a very tough thing for people, especially in, when they're so focused on, I need that immediate sale, right? So when, when you're looking to do, especially as a plumber, I, I need to increase sales right now. This is, when, it, when you execute this, everything else becomes easier. Your paid traffic, your PPC, everything else, because what you're doing is you're laying the foundation of, creating a website that gets people attached to what your value proposition is. And I'm trying to be very clear about this because let me go back to just kind of use an example of what I would do, which is as a plumber, I would want to get people on my email list and what I would curate, what I would publish is the most interesting stuff in my local area because I got to be localized, right? And then what I would do is I retarget the hell out of people so that they get on my email list because then what I would send them is I wouldn't send them plumbing advice. I might send them maybe home improvement advice if I thought it was really good, maybe. I would send them the most entertaining stuff that I could send them that will make them click and pay attention to me every time I sent them an email. Mm -hmm. Same thing, I would curate the most entertaining stuff from my local area that would get them to have to absolutely click that when they saw it on Facebook. So when I shared it on Facebook, they saw it on Facebook, they were like, what is that about, you know? And then I would make sure that I've done a really good job of branding myself as Scott the Plumber Guy, right? Whatever, you know, however I want to term that or however I build that brand. That way, I, they, they've seen me enough, right? They're, they're coming across me enough. I, no one is going to click on how to fix your pipes in your house, right? Right. No one, they, they might, but they're, they're probably not, you know, th that's probably not the person you want anyways because... The person that's going to click on how to fix your pipes, they're probably going to try to do it themselves. I want someone that doesn't have a clue, but that thinks of me as the plumber guy, right? So that's why with, with curation, a lot of times uh, we see this too. With someone sets up the listening engine, and then we'll come and say, look, it would probably be better instead of like trying to do the how-to, like you mentioned, the how-to articles, exactly what you said, which is like very focused on your localized area. Subscribe to all your newspapers. Create keywords around your new, around your your news, your local news items, and then when a story pops up that you know is really interesting, curate that. Add your own thoughts. Add you know, not everybody can be funny, not everybody can be you know, do a quick. But you know what? Figure out how you can actually publish something and then relate, not relate it, but make sure that it it's very clear that it's coming from you. And think about conversion. That's why I even today I, I feel the best. And anybody in any market um, can focus on email marketing, can focus on that as a conversion funnel. Uh, if you look at where curation sits, right, if you want to know, curation can sit in a couple different places, but you really want to know where it sits in the, the marketing funnel if we were to say that the marketing funnel still exists. 
uh, it sits at the top of the funnel. Mm -hmm. It's an awareness. It really is an awareness. It can be an, an engagement opportunity. Curation can be an engagement opportunity for your existing customer. But in order for it to be an engaging opportunity, you have to be very good at reinforcing the value. Um, and that, that actually gets to probably one of the biggest secrets that uh, I'll share with you about curation, which is, and this is going to sound funny coming from people that create a uh, curation tool, and we create a tool that is really designed to give you the content you should publish. Uh, it's designed to really you know, show you in your market, in your niche, what you should publish. Here's the content that's trending. The true secret about curation uh, is that it's not necessarily about what you curate. Everybody is always focused on what you curate. If you really want to have success with curation, if you want to, to knock it out of the park with curation, no matter what market or what niche or what you sell or how you monetize, it's that when you publish a piece of curation, if the second that the person lands on your piece of content, they understand the value that you provide and that you reinforce that value in your commentary. And when you understand kind of this core secret, it frees you a tremendous amount of using in, in using curation in your strategy. Because when you say when you look at it and say, I can if I can take any story, if we could go to dig right now and I can pick the top five stories, and out of all five stories, I can find a way to relate that to my market, to the value that I provide, so that on a subtle level, on a very, and I'm going to say psychological level, on a psychological level, you feel as a visitor the value that I provide, then you've mastered the secret of curation because that's what it's about. Now, that means the content you curate is almost secondary because really your role as a curator, your role as a publisher, your role as someone that's looking to convert is to always reinforce the value you provide to your market, to the niche you're going after, to the audience that you're going after, that's really the key. That's why on political sites, what you see, if, if you see curation, a lot of times what, what you'll see, especially if it doesn't matter, you go to the right or left, and I know it's different in different countries, but in the States, the right or left, if you go to a right site, um, a right-leaning site, there might be one line of commentary, and it'll be something like, oh, the liberals are at it again. See what they did in Michigan? And then there's a link, and then there's some there's like usually two to three paragraphs of snippet. You'll see that on a lot of political sites. If you look at that though, what are they doing with that commentary? They're feeding their audience. They're they're reinforcing the value. When I go to that site, whatever site it is, I'm going there because I resonate with that message. And with that one line of commentary, it reinforced the value that I get there. Which is, uh, th which Literal is, look how, yeah. <laughs> look at how crazy the other side is. Exactly. Yep. You go to the left side; they're going to do the same thing. That's why they don't need a lot of commentary. That that that's a good example of of what you should do in your own content marketing, no matter what market you're in, especially with curation. Is that you should be able to? And this is I just had a quick start meeting. Our quick start is our our one on one consulting. I just had a quick start meeting with a very very, uh, you know, can't mention the guys, but he does a lot of great things in Canada. And, you know, I sh we were talking about his listening engine, and I said, look, you have 24 stories here. Really, the way to look at this page that you see right here is you're seeing the trending content and how you set up your listening engine. This is what you have available to publish right now. If you want the quickest way to publish content, number one, Put in your calendar whatever time you can you can afford, not what time you can afford, or what time you're going to sit down and publish. So 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. you're going to get up and publish, and at 10 a.m. you're going to pull up your listening engine, and these 24 stories are what you have available to publish. Pick one of them, go through the curation process, add the value that you add, and click publish. That's the quickest way to ensure you're going to publish every single day. And you got it and said, awesome, I got it. You know, that that's... But see, when, when you kind of understand the secret of curation, when you understand that, hey, um, I don't have to, like if I'm, if, if I'm in, like so for instance, we're in marketing, we publish a lot about marketing, but we never publish content about marketing. We publish content about psychology. You know, we published a story once about how, how dolphins interact and how you can, how dolphins interact with each other in the water and how you can relate that to actually 
uh, attracting a tribe in digital media, right? Now, if I would have curated something on just uh, the latest SEO change, you might remember that. But are you going to remember more the story that I told about dolphins and how that relates to marketing? Which yeah. one? Which one, from a value perspective of, of you coming to you know me as a unique individual or our company as a unique individual, are you going to remember? You know that that's really why I say when you understand that it frees you to kind of use the strategy of content curation because then when you understand this is kind of like an advanced kind of tactic in curation, not really advanced, I wish more people knew about it, because it really frees you to kind of like curate from anywhere, right? It frees you to, to kind of like, um, especially with the plumber example, if you can now curate the latest gossip news in your city and be part of, I hate this phrase, but part of the conversation, you're going to show up more in the Facebook feeds. You're going to show up more in the, the local Twitter conversation. You're going to show up more on where people are at and people are going to come to your site, and that's going to give you more of an opportunity to get people closer aligned with your brand to your conversion opportunities than if you talked about plumbing and if yeah. you talked about how-tos because that's not your audience. That's not the audience that you're going after. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's gold cool. because what you're yeah. saying yeah. is, you know, you know, pretty cool that you, you talk about just, just getting in the conversation. I know you said you hated that. But just being part of the conversation, uh, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It's just being getting known, like getting getting recognized by others, especially like in a local area or whatever. Um, and and that's pretty cool because it, you're right. I mean, who the hell wants to hear about how to fix leaky pipes? Like, I mean, most people don't. And like you said, if it's somebody actually looking for that kind of content, they're most likely going to be the ones that are going to tell you how to do your your job when you show up as the plumber. You know, <laughs> so that's not what you want, anyways. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Good no, not, go ahead. Uh, we did have a couple of questions. I'm going to touch on these real quick, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, real quick, and I, I think we kind of covered this, but I just want to uh, put the, the finishing touches on this, if possible. Sky was asking, he heard this, the legal um, you know, fair use in the beginning, but he's wondering if any websites are having any legal issues with this or if there was a court ruling that laid the roadway for everyone to do this. I am not familiar with this, and I don't know if, you're aware, or if there is, uh, I'm familiar with fair use, and I would think that this is covered under something of that. As far as even commercial use, if you have a blog that makes money, you are still allowed to cite sources and to, you know, to use that information. Yeah. So I should probably. I'm not an attorney. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a. You know, I don't play one on TV or anything like that. <laughs> so um, the the bare minimum, what everybody should have, is a DMCA. Uh, obviously privacy notice, everything else, but a DMCA notice, and if you don't know what that is, uh, Digital Millennium, you know, uh, Copyright Act. Copyright Act, thank you. Um, you should have a DMCA page. Basically, it's a page that allows uh, people to contact you if they have problems with the content that you have on your site and to ask you to take it down. So uh, search for a DMCA page. Uh, there's probably a couple templates out there that you can use. Uh, that's the bare minimum in addition to all your other privacy pages and everything else you should have. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the only real kind of sticking point you've got to be careful about with curation uh, and, and citing is images because mm -hmm. you really don't have the right to use images. Um, you know, our tool allows you to use images pretty freely. Uh, we do have some features that allow you to cite that image, but it doesn't give you, it doesn't, you still technically don't have the right there. Um, what we use images all the time. We, we we link to our DMCA. Uh, you're not typically going to have problems because one of the well, this is this is the uh, learned advice we've got, uh, which is uh, Facebook does the same thing, right? You publish your content on Facebook, they don't have rights to use that image. Um, so you're using the same fair use kind of law to actually utilize that. That's why you do want a DMCA. Um, we haven't heard of anybody having any problems. Uh, one of the things that you you that was of concern is that the EU was they were kind of crazy, but they were gonna really change the way hyperlinks worked on the internet. It's kind of like the 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 uh, I guess the the link bait the link bait way to say it. Um, it wasn't that that extreme, but they were that did not go through. So the EU was maybe gonna change it. Now the one country I think is it is Spain 
has gone to the point of saying, if you use even a snippet, you have to pay. And Google has pulled out of Spain because, so our, our tool doesn't even allow you to search in Spain because of that. And if you do, Google will put an announcement or a notice saying, unfortunately, you can't find Google News content here because they passed a law that we would have to pay. Um, so really, there's no, it's fair use even in a commercial sense because you're, you're, you're citing stuff. It's just like uh, using um, songs in a parody, right? There's kind of like a, a special, um, special thing already carved out in the copyright law so people can cite things. Uh, so there's no, um, it, it should be, in any country, you should be uh, able to do curation. You should be able to do curation in the right way. Uh, once again, to be on the, the safest side possible, uh, what you want to do is the safest is to do two to three paragraphs or two to three sentences, and then attribute, which is a link attribution to that source. That I don't know how anybody could not argue that's not fair use. And the first thing they got to start with anyway is a DMCA request, meaning they got to go to your page, they got to then send you an email or whatever your DMCA policy is, and then request that you take down that content. So what about, um, you know, I've, I have had in the past, it, it's happened where in curating content where we've received an extortion letter from Shutterstock or whatever the hell, Getty Images. I know you're familiar with that because, that, yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty damn common. And um, so how do you get around, I mean, now, like my curators now, I tell them like flat out, don't use just any image. Like they go pull original images from um, either we have, a, um, um, you know, an account set up on a stock images site where they can buy images for to use in the curated content, or they'll go to YouTube and freeze frame a video and take a screenshot of a of the video and use that as an image in the content. But outside of that, how do you protect yourself from getting extortion letters such as that with images? Well, the easiest answer is exactly what you've done, right? Which is not use it. Okay. The other thing that we do uh, is we use just a thumbnail, right? So we don't hold. We always hot link the hot link the images, so sometimes that does mean that the images go down because they're not there. So we can make the argument that hey, um, you know we're hot linking the image. We're not hosting the image ourselves, right? We're using a thumbnail that's you know kind of fair use. We're citing just like Facebook, Google. Um, you know I've had we've had our attorneys. You know like I said we're not I'm not an attorney so don't take what I say as legal advice but you know, we're comfortable with doing it the way we do it. You look at all of the curations that we do on our sites, uh, they all have little thumbnails or images. Um, we do, so another ninja, and if we have time, I can cover like an advanced kind of roundup post. So we do a couple weekly roundup posts. One of them we do is WordPress. And uh, it's a WordPress weekly roundup, and this is another easy way to do curation. We take the five. We, we use the listening engine. We we sort it. Let's say, show me the stories published over the last seven days that have the most shares, and we go through those stories and we publish five or seven of them. We usually don't add any commentary. We just typically just pull the initial two two sentences, and then we just cite that actual story, and then it's a big roundup post. Now that these these curations work really well for us. And I'll share with you why they work really well for us and how you could do it yourself, which is our product is a WordPress product, right? So our roundups that we do is it says WordPress Week in Review is always the title. And then we actually, what we do is then we continue with what is in that actual Week in Review. And you can go to our site, curationsuite.com slash blog. You're going to see our WordPress Week in Reviews. And the reason why these work well, and this is why you can kind of do a strategy like this because our product's WordPress base. So our argument is anybody that has WordPress needs our product. Look, you're, you're publishing content. You have WordPress. So if you see that link in Twitter, if you see a headline, WordPress Week in Review, you're not going to click on that unless you're interested in WordPress, right? So this gives us another opportunity, which we do, which I'm sorry for people that visit there, we're going to retarget you. So now people that visit that site that specific section of our site, which is all our WordPress Week in Reviews, they get retargeted with specific messages about want to publish in WordPress, want to increase your publishing in WordPress, want the quickest way to publish in WordPress, the, the WordPress curation strategy. You know, so 
doing a weekly roundup, which takes uh, the person that we've trained about 10 minutes to do a weekly roundup, uh, five to seven top stories in WordPress, allows us a very focused retargeting opportunity. Hmm. I know I kind of went off the tangent compared to your question, but... Um, no, 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 that's, that's gold, man. So, thank you. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, this is funny. Um, I'm not going to lie. We've been talking in the background, uh, Scott. We were chatting, and I'm not sure about any of our Mastermind members, but uh, we decided we're going to pick up the listening engine for Semantic Mastery. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, <laughs> you, you made a sale already on this webinar. <laughs> it, yeah, this is good. We're like, oh, yeah, we got some ideas. All right, we can combine this with some of the stuff we're doing with Twitter and this and that. So, um, Now, this is good. I've got uh, one more um, from a... Let's see, take a look at the page. Okay, cool. Thanks, Marco. Um, and then Earl was asking, any comments on the frequency of posting for local clients to start or maintain? I think you kind of touched on this when you were talking about, you know, just a high frequency of publishing. Um, I think you were talking about that in ter and uh, variation being kind of helpful uh, in terms of what you've seen as good results for people, but I may have gotten that a little uh, wrong. So, Here's my advice from years of digital marketing ourselves. Uh, and then seeing it in action, and and actually look at look at it yourself. Can can you think of any site that you that you follow that you go to that has decreased its publishing? No. You've been following on the web, yeah. Mashable doesn't matter. Any site that you know, we could go through Buzzfeed. We could do a Mashable. We any site. Has there any with maybe a rare exception? Is there any site out there that has decreased publishing? No. So. My answer to that is how much should I publish? As much as you physically can. As much as your audience will consume. Because your role as a publisher, your role as a curator is to gather an audience. Gather an audience and convert that audience. That's your role. And, and, and you might be converting them advertising, your product, your service, or just to build authority. And the ability to publish is really kind of the key. And I've never seen a site that published more that didn't get more traffic. I didn't see, and the other thing about publishing is it's just like anything else. You get better with it at time, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and it gets into a rhythm. It's also why I think if, if you've tried to do curate, if you tried not curation, if you tried to do content in the past and it hasn't worked, you need to start with curation because curation is the easiest way to publish. Like I said, once again, you can go to Dig right now and take the top story of Dig. We'll actually do this right now and we'll go to Dig. Because, you know, that's that's kind of like, what is it? It's a um, story behind hockey's most famous photo. You know, this might be one where you might want to be careful about using that photo, right? Um, but you should be able to take this story and find a way to relate it to your audience, right? I'm a plumber. The story behind hockey's most famous photo. This reminds me of a time that I went into a house, and it was the middle of winter, and I literally was surprised that I saw a hockey rink all through the first floor. Right? Nice. Yeah. You know? Bam. Good and way. That, 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 was, that was quick. You found an angle quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you say, what's amazing about this is I never really saw this photo before, but it is pretty amazing. Look at the way the guy's flying like Superman. Right? Yeah. You know, the political one, the next one, Paul Ryan, I don't care about. Hellish image. Footage from so you another another thing about curation is that generally you try to want to stay positive, right? So this one about the uh, the actual terrible fire in Canada, uh, you probably want to stay away from, it, right? So it's going to be hard to spin. It's really hard to spin political stuff unless you want to be political. It's one reason why I don't go to Facebook because I'm you know where I'm at on the spectrum, I, I still don't even care, right? Where I'm at on the political spectrum. I, when I go to Facebook, even if I see stuff that I agree with, I just still don't care, right? Um, so you probably typically want to stay away from political stuff, or this isn't something where if it bleeds, it leads. You're not a news organization unless, you know, you want to be that. If you want to delve into what's happening and the fires and everything else, you can, but you've got to be very careful about that because those aren't, you know, these aren't, you got to think about the conversion. you got to think about the authority, right? If I curate a story about this this video of this fire, how is that going to play into my conversion? How is that going to play into my authority? How is that going to play into me reinforcing my value, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you kind of want to stay away from things like that. 
But these general, you should be able to spin these general interest stories, the stuff that you see on Dig or even pop up on Facebook, pretty quick. You just got to be able to find a way to relate it. And I know it's kind of a skill that, that's why also, like I said before, if, you, if you've struggled trying to create content, curation is great because the topic's already chosen for you. It's already there. You just need to add your own thoughts. Now we have a, so we've done a training, um, so we've created a template, for instance, that we call our Power Words template. And it's, it's basically a sentence that you can start any, one of the biggest challenges people have when they write is writing that first sentence, right? You're looking at a blank screen. Um, so usually writing that first sentence, so there's a trick that I, that I share people. We have power words. So what you would do is you would say, this story is from Deadspin. A power word is like reveals, reports, discovers, uncovers, um, highlights, right? So you would say Deadspin highlights the story behind hockey's most famous photo. And then what you do is you become a child. What I mean by that when you become a child is, I don't know what age this is, but my daughter, she had this game, and I know every child does, they have the why game. And they, 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 they learn it. And why? Why? <laughs> exactly. I think they're all trained this somewhere that, that adults aren't Aren't, they, they forget about. They use the little men in black thing on adults and they forget where they learned it. But you know, it's that why game where basically a child just asks why, why, why until eventually you give up and you say just because, right? You can do the same thing with your commentary. You can say Dead Spin reveals the story behind hockey's most famous photo. Why is this important? And then ask why again. This is important because you know, hockey is you know, such a, so hockey is a very de I live in Minnesota, so hockey is the backbone of any Minnesotan, you know, Minnesotan family, right? Why is that important? It, sometimes it's a little bit harder to do if you're not, like I'm doing it on the fly. But what you want to really do is just ask why. Continue asking yourself why. And one of the true secrets I've had about writing that um, is that don't edit, just write, just type. Yeah. So when you when you answer these why questions, just type and then go edit. So like if I was doing this now, I would then I would keep asking myself why. I would do the first sentence, and then I would say this is important. Why? 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 And I might have 10 to 15 lines of text, and maybe I'm only going to use seven or eight of them because the other ones were just I don't know what I was thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the keys that I tricks I found in my own um, experience with writing. Like I. I don't mind writing, but I'm so damn slow at it, and it's on, and it's, and it's because I, you know, I start to write, and then I go back and edit, and then I write a little more and then edit again, and I think that's something that you just pointed out that's pretty uh, important. If you just write, just write, go back and edit afterwards. You know what I mean? You'll get a hell of a lot more accomplished that way. So. Well, and that's the other. I'll go back to you know a lot. Of, I don't. I think a lot of your people on the mastermind are are at the expert level, but. If you are having problems with writing, one of the biggest, I've got a whole bookshelf full, if you saw it, it's writing books. And I've got a couple of novels that I've, that I, it's one of my things that I want to write. I've got a couple in my head. And the only secret that I found that works is to sit down and write, which is surprising. But these books are full of advice. And this, this advice I, I would transfer over to content or anything is that you need to find what works for you. What, what, so for me, what works for me, I'll just tell a story, is it, no matter what, when I need to get something done, I need to sit down and schedule it, but if I turn on music, that flips a switch in my mind and it gets me focused. So a lot of times, with especially with curation or anything else, you need to find that process that works for you. The tools help, so our tools help a tremendous amount, but it still requires someone, either you or you creating the process or system excuse me, to make it happen, right? You've got to create that process or system to make it happen. And a lot of times it sometimes comes down to tricking yourself, not tricking yourself, but getting yourself into the zone and figuring out what is that. You know, what is that that gets you in the zone? I don't know if that helps anybody. But. Yeah, awesome. No, this is super helpful. This is, uh, yeah, I mean, this is crazy. We're probably just going to keep going if you don't mind. I, I wanted to ask you if you're all right to keep going. Sure, yeah. Cool. Awesome. No, these are great tips, and it's really interesting to me. We've talked to people about curation and said, you know, this is for a lot of people who get started doing SEO. We're like, you, you know, this is something you should be selling to your clients. 
And then as you're talking about this and using these angles, and I mean, you could really take someone's uh, content curation and somebody's even local services, you could really, um, this is a big value add, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like you could, somebody could really position this, um, you know, and really do quite well with this. Uh, so I hopefully for everybody listening, you know, you're able, if you're already doing this, to incorporate some of this. And then if you're not, to probably think about it. So. We have a couple, we have quite a few agencies that do use our tool. We have actually built a specific agency tool. Uh, where uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to access multiple listening engines in one WordPress dashboard and publish to multiple sites in one WordPress dashboard. So you don't okay. even have to have access. So it's like a control process. center almost. Uh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. It, it's like a control center almost. Yeah, it's like a control center. So basically, it's a one-to-one -one relationship to the to you and the 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 master site and the child site. And all you need is an author level access to the actual client site, and then you can publish content to their site. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, are you familiar with like Main WP? Yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing yeah. it's kind of along the idea. I mean, that's for site management, but something like that. It's exactly kind of along the sense. You have one dashboard, and you're kind of in there. We use that ourselves. Yeah. And and so, uh, so we have a company. What they've done is they've uh, they service home. Um, the, the people that fix houses and, you know... Um, oh, I know uh, what you're talking about. They build for Habitat for Humanity, maybe? No, they're or they're um, contractors, but they're... Oh, okay. So they, they, start, they, they, whatever, they have relationships with contractors. They do SEO for contractors. And um, what they do is they do curation for contractors. And they have one... Uh, and they have a, a custom listening engine that they've set up. And they do kind of the curation strategy where... They curate how-to articles. They curate localized content, and they do it in very a passive voice, right? Because what what the strategy is for the clients is to once again keep their site lively. They push this out to Facebook. They do other work. I know they do much more advanced work, you know, on the SEO side. But they use kind of curation as one of the backbones to keep the site fresh. Uh, and then what they do is they they I think they have 20, 25 different clients around the country. And they use this one listening engine then to publish out to these multiple sites. And sometimes they're curating the same article. And what they'll do is they'll change up the commentary. Because keep in mind, the unique content of the of a curation is not, of course, it's one, one question people have is, won't that be duplicate content? It won't be duplicate content if you have commentary. That's why you need commentary. So what they do is they might find one story that plays well in seven, seven eight cities, and they won't spin the actual commentary, they'll rewrite the commentary specific to that market in very unique ways. Yeah. And then they'll even sometimes even cite it a little bit. They'll change the link. Um, our tool does some other things to make sure that there's no footprint. But, um, you know, because we, we built it that way because I, I know this stuff. So kind of th they do some things like that. They do some really advanced kind of interesting things that I, uh, you know, like you said, you're, Clients that are looking to service that you can use a curation first model. One of the challenges you're going to have there is you don't want to get into a with curation. You don't really want to get into a relationship where you have an approval process because it slows down the whole process of of, of content. Where if you're creating unique content for for clients, generally you're going to have a plan, right? You're gonna you're gonna know your you're gonna know your keywords that you're targeting. You're gonna know the type of content you want. You kind of already got to sign off on a kind of general bulleted plan of what that content's going to be about, right? With curation, what you're looking to do to get into a relationship with your clients with is you're looking to be able to publish nimbly, be able to publish quickly. So what you need to have is general guidelines of the type of stuff that you will cover, the type of stuff that you will curate, and the voice that you will actually write in. Meaning we're going to write from a perspective of you know a third party, you know, very passive just reporting the news, or we're going to try to inject a little bit of personality. It depends on the skill set of your team, right? But that's what I've seen be the most successful with companies that have used our platform is that they've got into these relationships where they have a very – they've, they've, um, they've controlled the relationship with the client, and controlled probably is a bad word, but controlled it to the point where there's a trust there in what they publish. And there's not a lot of, oh, well, I don't want that post that you just curated, or I don't want this. There's not, it's more of a kind of a one-way street on what we're publishing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's exactly how we do it. Um, for my agency, um, 
There's a little bit of echo coming through somewhere. You guys hear that echo? Okay. Sorry. Anyways, that's that's very similar to what what we do. Is um, a lot of the clients that we curate for, you know, they they really are hands off as far as like my my curators curate and that's it. And like very rarely does any one of my clients come back and say something about a particular post. So it's just on the front end when we get set up doing that sort of an engagement with a client. There's a little bit of like you said some some content guidelines that get set into place up front, and usually the first several posts that go out, curated posts that go out, will be reviewed by the actual client and to get the green light, the thumbs up, or any you know suggest any edits or something that they don't like. And then after we kind of find our voice, so to speak, that or the curators find their voice for that client, then it's just it's just it's just uh, you know autopilot from that point forward and it's great because it's a continuous stream of revenue that requires very little bit of my very little bit of input from me and my curators just do the work and I make revenue from it so it's, it's a great great um, relationship yeah I think it's a good model I do think and I I do think there's opportunity for we're not seeing so what we're seeing on on the people that use our platform we're not seeing it as a curation first. It's it's usually an add-on service. I don't know if that's what you're you're selling there, but it's usually because it's one thing. I'll, I'll be truthful about curation. Curation is never going to be unique content. You just never can. So you know if you're looking at curation as a straight up SEO play, it helps. It enhances. I can show you in in Google where you know our curations rank. So they do rank, but they're never going to beat unique content. It's just not going to happen. So it's it's always an enhancement of your authority. It's always a it's also a really good social play because it allows you to publish quickly and and you can get into the conversation of social really quickly. So like the Facebook post, like I mentioned today about Facebook change, that that that's a great post. We publish that it gets us part of that conversation that's going on and it brings traffic to our site and then people get into our conversion funnel and. It, it's a it's a uh, a topic that's in align with our persona that converts to our offers, right? So that's the key is that yeah you can you you do have to be a little bit cognizant of what you publish sometimes because if you publish too much garbage it's gonna give you it, it's gonna be harder to do advanced strategies like retargeting or to really figure out okay what is what is going to convert, right? And some of that though is sometimes just how you craft your headline. Right, mm -hmm. if you just craft the headline a different way. A lot of times, that's that's the biggest aspect of what's going to get you traffic these days. Right, is the headline. So if you craft the headline a certain way, that is going to pre-select people whether or not they're in that target market that you want to target. Hopefully, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um, I got a question. I'm going to kind of wrap a couple from people. Um, and then one of mine, this, uh, how best he, so my question I had written down for myself to ask you was kind of using the listening engine to ride traffic surges, um, at least from the social standpoint. But I'm going to kind of wrap that into a couple of questions because people were asking about um, the actual services and somebody was saying, you know, how, you know, I use Google Alerts, you know, is this better than using Google Alerts to my inbox? So I'm wondering if you can kind of talk about uh, just in a, a couple minutes, kind of for people who haven't seen the products, like what is Curation Suite? What is Listening Engine? Like if I go and pay you today and for both of those, like what do I what do I get? What do I, I, what does it look like? Is it you know cloud based? Is it desktop software? Sure. No. So our we have three kind of core offerings. Our our first one is Curation Suite plugin. It's a plugin that works with any theme oh. or plugin you have in your site. If I can interrupt you for a second. Sure. Can you take us into your into your screen, into your dashboard, and, and show us? Yeah, I can do that. I'm gonna lock the screen on you, Scott. Then. Cool. Let me get rid of yeah, the good, Marco. I didn't I tags. I have tabs. I will open. Yeah. <laughs> Close that right. stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, I, well, and I've got a 34-inch monitor, so I gotta go to the what? one that's small. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna kill the connection. So I've got this down in Skype. How do I do this in? Should be. Let me see if I've got this right. On the left-hand side of the screen, there. If you hover near the left side, you'll get a kind of a pop-out, and one of the things is a green button that says Screen Share. Yeah. And then it'll let you select what you want to share. Yeah. Select the window that you have open for that browser. 
I see it. I do not. Oh, there we go. So I'll just pull up the pricing because it makes it really easy to show. So we have three core offerings, which is the Curation Suite plugin, uh, which is one-time fee. It works with any theme or plugin you have. It has a lot of power into itself. It's kind of the foundation of our, of our platform. The listening engine is cloud-based. You're accessing it within your, and I'll go to this here in a second. You're accessing it within your actual WordPress dashboard, but it's cloud-based because there's no way we could put this on a shared host or anywhere, and it would scale. It just would be virtually impossible. So it's cloud-based. You do access everything that you do is within the WordPress dashboard. And then our quick start package is one-on-one -on -one consulting. It, I liken it to like riding a bike with content curation. We take you from basically not knowing curation to technical demos with our tools to advanced strategies like retargeting, conversions in your site, and everything else. So I'll, I'll start with, actually, I'll start with kind of uh, the Curation Suite plugin. So the Curation Suite plugin works in the standard post area WordPress. And it flies out here to the right. So you'll see here, I'm looking at what we call the Curation Suite sidebar. And it has a lot of power into itself without the listening engine. So the first thing that you can do is you can search for content to curate by searching Google News, Twitter, Bing News, Reddit, Giphy, YouTube, and SlideShare. And I can do this by, let's say, let's search for Google News on content marketing. I just clicked on the keyword content marketing. And you'll see here's content that came back for me to actually curate. Now, with the Curation Suite plugin, we have a, a series of tools that allow you to do quick curations. So I could quickly add what I see here to the post box by just clicking this. And you'll nice. see that that's added to the post box. That image isn't that great looking, so I would probably just remove that. But now that's all, all that's left is for me, you know, add my commentary. Right? So, you know, typically I want four to five sentences of commentary, and then this would be enough to actually cite the actual content here, and then I would hit publish, right? So that's a really quick way to kind of do a quick curation. I just did a keyword search in Google News. Let's say I wanted to spice this up a bit. I could maybe even search Twitter, and I could add some tweets. So let's search, we're searching Twitter for content marketing. You'll see some tweets will come back, and I can embed these tweets right into my post. So you'll see it's embedded there. And this tweet here, that one's embedded here. So you'll see with just that quick, I was able to add three tweets with content marketing. <laughs> now I could, between here, and you'll see this with a site like, I really like this site. You know, if you want to model it's something you could do, it's, it's, it's a right-leaning site. So if you're liberal and, and this is like showing you the cross, I apologize. Um, <laughs> So Twitchy, they do a really good job of what they do. You'll see that they do a couple tweets, and then they put in their commentary. They do a couple tweets. You know, they put in their commentary. So you can do the same thing. You could pick a story, and you could just put in your commentary. You know, put in your, your commentary. You know, generally, we like to see people do um, what are called evergreen content. Everybody hopefully knows what evergreen content is. We have curations that we published over five years ago that's still getting traffic today. So, you know, nice. what, we spent, what, 10, 15 minutes creating a curation, and it's still rotated in our sharing, and it's still getting traffic and conversions. Tell me where else you can spend 10 to 15 minutes and, you know, continue to get conversions after four or five years, right? So, you know, it, but my point in that is that if you're going to do tweets, generally that's going to be dated content, right? It's not going to be something that's going to be, um, it's not going to be evergreen content. But you can curate straight up evergreen content, like the, the, 17, um, the 17 leadership tips. You can curate a story about that, and that will still be valid in four years. You know, people are still going to be interested in leadership tips, unless we have a complete you know, social breakdown. Uh, just real quick, a question. Um, BJ was asking, does this search press releases too, which just from my understanding, if it's in Google News, it would show up in the Google News search, but I might be missing something. I don't know if you guys or Scott have any input on that. It does, but you know, we block press releases from our listening engine because we don't find it as high quality content. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're often yeah. promotional. Yeah, so, so yeah. we block the PR news sites. We've had some people request them 
for certain search in engines, but we usually, and, and I hate to send people away, we usually say our product's not a fit. Our product is very socially focused. It's very focused, and you'll see that here in a second. It's very focused on giving you content um, based on social shares or data, just and press releases generally, um, if, if you're in a very focused market, that's great, because maybe you do want to know that stuff, but that's not the most engaging content. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, with Google News or Twitter or even Bing News, we can search Bing News. Oh, it's searching Arabic, so I haven't set that. Um, as you can see here, I have the options to set uh, my actual language. Um, and then I can search the same thing, content marketing, with uh, Bing News. Now, with this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use what's called our uh, Curation Suite Visual Editor. And this, what this does, when I click on Curate, you'll see it loaded that content and now it gives me the ability to select the various elements from that piece of content that I want to cite. So if I go here, I can select this image I want to cite. You can also see there's a screenshot. So the, the first image is always a screenshot of that actual piece of content. Here I can go through the content and I actually can select the content that I want to cite. And then, let's say I want to drop this here. The way to look at all these buttons, and I know there's a lot of buttons here, is it's just a bunch of shortcuts for how you want this content to lay out in your post box. So what I'm going to do is it's going to wrap in block quote. The link's going to be after. And I'm going to add this to my post box with a left aligned image. And there's the content that I just added. So it's wrapped in. It's a little bit hard to tell in my development environment here that it's wrapped in block quote. But it's wrapped nice. in block quote. I could do the same thing. I could add it with a headline. I could have the link be before. And then if I add this here, you'll see that changed how the content is added. Now the link is above. Here's the headline. So the, what, what we do with our tools, we really just give you a lot of quick shortcuts to curate content quickly. One That's of the awesome. coolest things we've added, i got to show this. Reddit is like a gold mine for most people, right? Mm -hmm. We added Reddit two weeks ago. And so I can search Reddit for, uh, I don't know, content marketing. And now it's going to search Reddit for the latest threads on Reddit for me to actually curate. And what it, what I can do with this is it's right now it blocked 24 threads. So if you know Reddit, it's basically conversations. Uh, it only gave me the content that I could curate. So you'll see here, here's a story I could curate. Let's do one on drones because that's going to be a little bit more popular on Reddit. Mm -hmm. So if I do drones, you'll see there's here's a, a image I can add, a, vi a Vimeo uh, image, actually, a Vimeo video. Here's a YouTube video. Let's say I want to drop that to my post. I just quickly grab that. It will be dropped into my post. That's freaking sweet. <laughs> um, I can set this image as a featured. So let's say I want to set this image as featured. I can set it as featured. You'll see that now the image has been set as featured. Um, so you'll see here, just by searching Reddit, I'm, I, I just found a video that I could curate. Um, we were actually going to – I'm going I'm to send this as an email tomorrow. Because this, this video is about, and this is a prime example, actually, of curation. This video, if you watch it, it's about uh, how Intel built these 100 drones into a fireworks display. And my hook in the email is that, um, will people show up to boomless fireless fireworks display? You know, something like that, right? And how, you know, really it's about spectacle. People are going to show up to a drone fireworks display. They'll probably be. They'll probably say that I wish there was booms, but there'd be a lot of people that would show up to a, a lighting display, especially when you watch this video of drums, right? Because it looks really cool. So you know that's an example of me taking something that was popular on Dig. I saw this originally on Dig, and then finding a way to relate it to my market, right? Um, but I could have found this on, as you can see, I could have found this on Reddit. So Reddit's a gold mine of content for any market. Sometimes you do have to get a little creative of how you're going to find that content. And we have a lot more to come with this Reddit stuff um, because I think it's a, I know it's quick, a huge opportunity. Uh, quick question for you, Scott. Someone was asking, are there any plans to add Quora? What is Quora? Quora? Uh, Q-U-O-R-A. It's more of a oh. question and answer, but oh, yeah. kind of a community yeah. thing. Um, you know what? We can look at that. We haven't had a request for that, but that might be something... Um, yeah, that'd be, I think that'd be a good one. It, it might be tough to get a lot, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's formatted correctly where you could probably pull content pretty easy. So, and One thing that we've done that is a little that makes us, number one, we're WordPress-based. Um, but the other thing that we've really done that you know, we don't 
we don't highlight enough, and I wish we probably will in our new update of our site, is that what our what our curation suite technology does is like if I drop a link in here and I load that link, what it does is it analyzes that piece of content for anything I can cite on that piece of content. From text to images to videos. So you'll see here, I just loaded a link from one of our sites. And you'll see here, I can cite text. So let's say I don't want to do a full curation. I can just drop this text in there. And now I'm dropping individual paragraphs. So maybe oh, wow. I have to do, you know, here is commentary, you know. So it, bre it breaks it out into elements, like all the separate elements, including paragraphs and all that. That's sweet. It, it does one more than that, too, or it does a lot more than that. So the other thing it does is there's videos. So on this post, you can't see this, there's social updates, there's images, there's an Instagram update, there's a Vimeo update, there's an image, or I don't know, I ever know how to say that. There's a, there's a YouTube, there's a Twitter, there's another video. You'll see here, I can go through and I can add these videos. So there's a third-party video from Ted that I can add to my post, and this should work. Sometimes it doesn't work in screen share. There, now the TED video was added. That was a piece of content. That, that was an embed that was on that content that I was curating. So one of the powers of our tool is that what we do is we analyze the content that you're curating, and if you can cite it, so this Instagram post, I can add this to my piece of content. If I can cite it on my post, if I can put it in WordPress, we give you the ability to recite it. So you'll see this Vine here I can add as well. So if you... I was going to ask you, if you scroll back up, I saw some links to like Majestic and stuff like that. What's What are those for? Is that just to analyze the content, like the SEO value of it? or? Yeah, so that's that's the analyze the content. So for instance here, we have our curation quality score, which will tell you uh, what's the quality of that content. And if I click on this, it'll open up the Moz Explorer. Okay. And then I can, I can see that. Same with Majestic. And, and a, you submit your own API credentials for that, or do you? Is that something that's just included as part of the? You, I'm, well, I'm assuming you've got to add your own details. Yeah, if right? you're logged into their site, then you're you you'll be fine because you okay, really, gotcha. Because you're just it's just a direct link. We we are looking at maybe doing the API, but you know one of the one of the things is most even the places that we cite, you're typically you're not going to find low quality content. Right. Okay. And our listening engine does include so like you'll see here. This is our listening engine. This first score that you see here, this first number is the Moz score, that piece of content. So we actually use Moz score. We have a, a proprietary system that we call Curation Quality Score. Nothing gets in your listening engine unless it passes that score. So you're not going to find anything in your listening engine below a Moz score of 25. Gotcha. So, um, and we can bump that up for some listening engines. But so, you know, we're already we make it a point that if if it's in your listening engine, you can find it. Now, when you're searching for content like we just did, um, you, of course, you know, we don't check that. That's why we include the shortcuts. Okay. So everything you've seen so far is just kind of part of the curation suite plugin. Are we good on time? Are we? Uh, yeah. I mean, Bradley, what do you? Uh, yeah, do you I mean, I, I, there, I know there's some other questions that we got to get to um, eventually, but this is damn, this is gold. <laughs> yeah. I'm, certainly, I'm trying to monopolize your time if you let us. <laughs> Well, let me show you something. So what, that's in the Curation Suite plugin. The other thing that we have is we have a shortcut. And this is, a, this is an awesome shortcut, too. I don't know why my screen is acting up. Um, so our Curate This shortcut allows you to be on a piece of content anywhere. And um, so we can go to TechCrunch. I can, I can drag the curate this shortcut up to my address bar, and then the add link shortcut. And now when I'm on a story like here at TechCrunch, I can click on curate this. It'll open up a new tab. I, You know, this is something that's powerful too. This gives me the ability to create a new post. I can create a new page. I can add this curated content to a draft post, or I can search for a published post like TechCrunch and then add this to another existing post. So one of the things we teach is that you should be able to create an evergreen post where you're always adding to it. So now, let's say I had a post that covered Bitcoin, which is what this is about. Yeah, Bitcoin. I could then add this curation to the top of that Bitcoin post, making it more relevant than pinging the search engine, pinging everybody else that, hey, it's updated. So I could have an evergreen post 
that is basically a curated evergreen post that is always added to using the curate this shortcut. Hmm. Now I'm just going to create a new post which is the default value. What this will do, it will load the curation suite visual editor. I go through and select the content that I actually want to cite. Add this, copy this to the, let's clean this up, copy this to the title, and then hide the curation suite sidebar. Add my commentary, select the category, and click publish. Nice. So you know, that's that's how to curate kind of like on the fly. The other option that I dragged up there is the add link. And there I'm just adding a link where I can later go to my go to my uh, my dashboard. Oh, here we go. Go to my curation suite sidebar and load the links that I saved and then go through the curation process. So it gives you the kind of save the link for later. Cool. So in, nice. in your day to day surfing of the web, if you find something interesting, you just click the add link and it's it's gonna be in your uh, you know content library and queue for you to use. Yep, exactly. It's awesome. And then so now I'll just jump over to the listing manager. We'll cover that real quickly. We just we're, uh, we have a release tomorrow. This is pretty cool. So we added um, we used to have a, a feature called uh, curate to draft, and a lot of people use this feature in conjunction with another tool called editorial calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my um, I'm going to show you how to publish a week's worth of content in kind of like a few seconds. Move to trash on drafts. Move to trash. So I'm in what's called our listening engine, and I could go through this, but I'll show you just kind of like kind of a highlight of kind of the first thing that you can do with our content in the listening engine is it, you can set it up how you want it. It's based on a series of keywords and RSS feeds. So you set up, you define your own keywords, you define your own RSS feeds. Once it's set up, it's pulling content, and then you have the ability to sort on the, your individual topics. You have the ability to sort by time frame, and then social data. So what I can do right now is I can say, show me the content published over the last 24 hours sorted by total shares. Now I'm seeing the content in my listening end by total shares. I could say, show me the content by LinkedIn shares. Maybe I want more business-focused content. You'll see I got different content back. Uh, I can also say, well, show me the content over the last 12 hours, for instance. So I can change the time frame. The other thing I can do is then I can dive into my topics. So in our listening engine, we have a series of topics. We have Apple, content marketing, copywriting, entrepreneurship. So I can say, well, show me the content published over the last 12 hours that have the most LinkedIn shares in the Apple topic. And now I'm going to get content. Um, so your, your sorting ability based on social data, I can also do most recent. So I can see the most recent content as well. So it gives you kind of the ability to kind of get very granular with your listening engine or very broad. So very broad is here's all my topics combined or, you know what, I really want to curate something on, let's say, uh, WordPress. And now I'm going to see all the content from WordPress published over the last 12 hours in my WordPress topic. So it allows me to get very granular with kind of how I discover content. Now, when you want to curate, we have, you do go through the same process. You click on this, it's going to open up a new tab. It's going to load up the curation suite visual editor. And then you go through and you select the content just as I kind of showed before. Um, the other thing I should mention is that you can access your listening engine content in the sidebar. So here I'm loading the same content as I am there. And it has the quick curation. So you'll see here I can add that to my post box. And you'll see here I just did a quick kind of two-part curation post, right? Um, so uh, everything that I can do in the listening engine in this, what we call the reading page, I can do in the curation suite sidebar. I have too many tabs open here in this sidebar. So that's something to keep in mind. Hmm. So one of the features that we've added that we updated here uh, this week is this feature here, what it does is it will create a draft post on, this is great for a team environment. This is how a lot of our agencies and our teams use this. Is that this has the draft? This has the draft categories in this site, or the, the categories in this site. So when I click on this, I can create a draft post 
on this post right here. So if I click this, it'll create a draft post with that category. Oh, nice. Always does this in screen share. So there was a post created. I'm going to go to my old, my all my topics because I'll show you how this kind of gets very powerful. So let's say that you go through here and you select the content that you want to create draft posts on. You select the category. Let's say you have a team, or even you, you could go there, go to your draft post after that, pick up the draft post, schedule it, and push publish. In our team environments, what people do is they use this to then select the draft. The writers then come in, pick up those drafts, they finish off the commentary, and then they either set it to pending or they set it to publish. So what, what the role of our curator does, our master curator, is they'll go through and they'll select the stories that go to draft posts. So what I'm doing right now as I'm talking is I'm just going through and I'm finding the stories that I find interesting, and I'm creating draft posts. I think I'm creating draft posts. Nope. I have the feature set to publish. So what I just changed on this feature is now it would publish the post right away which is kind of the new addition that we just added, which what that does is it published those posts right away. So what it did is it allowed, is if we went to the site, you'll see all those posts that I just did the curate to draft, I did quick curations on. You guys follow me? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's kind of a way to really do what is kind of more of an aggregation strategy. I don't know why it's loading so slow. But if yeah, you set it, it might to be uh, yeah, I see. Okay. But if you set so, it to publish a draft, then uh, like you said, you can go in and, and add your commentary and stuff like that. But it's it, it's like pre-populated at that point, correct? Yeah, it's all pre-populated. And if and if the the author wants to go through and actually um, maybe maybe they want to add their own commentary or they want to touch it up or curate something else, you can easily curate something else from that story. Nice. So you'll see here, I'm selecting just draft categories. So a lot of what our master curator does right now is he'll go into our various sites. He'll select the, the stories that need to be, uh, we have a series of writers, right? They then go in and finish up those content, those pieces of content with commentary, but he'll select the post. And then what he'll do is he'll use a visual calendar like this, which is uh, it's a plugin called Editorial Calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you use a plugin like Auto Social Poster or CoSchedule is another great plugin, it will automatically push these stories out when you publish them as well. Oh, so we have a we have a trick for that. <laughs> oh, you guys have that. IFTTT SEO Academy does all that for us. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's I, I told um, Adam before that I'm interested in that. So, and I don't know why it's not loading. It's. Yeah, we might be killing it with the uh, connection. Bandwidth, yeah. maybe. Yeah. It's well, let's, uh, I've got a couple questions. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, people are asking um, ab about it. Uh, we sent them, uh, somebody asked for the link, so we went ahead and gave it. So somebody was asking, if I pick up the content, su uh, sorry, creation suite and listening engine, will I pay 197 plus 97 right now and then 97 a year, or is it 197 now and then 97 a year? So it's, it's, that, one, it's 197 and then in seven days. So we offer a seven-day refund policy. Okay. And so the 197 is licensing, setup, and provisioning of the listening engine, and and then the 97 is in seven days, which is your subscription payment. Gotcha. And then that's in another another year, you'd be charged 97 dollars. Okay, um, Kendrick, if you're listening, um, one-time purchase for single sites or multiple sites. If you can clarify what you're asking about, because I think the uh, Curation Suite plugin and listening engine are different. It's not the same thing. So. We've changed uh, that recently. We've we've okay. added the ability now. You can add the listening engine. You can have the listening engine activated on activated on many on as many of your own sites as you want. Okay, cool. But one yeah. thing to keep in mind, it's a it's a cloud platform, so you're accessing one platform. So mm -hmm. all of all of these posts that I interacted with, they they everything's being tracked in your listening engine, so that you don't, you only see fresh content. So when you share a story, when you publish a story, when you ignore a story, so I can ignore a whole, I can ignore a whole domain, I can ignore this story, I'll never see that story again. So I can do a lot of filtering, but when you curate stuff, all that's being tracked. So when you're sharing a listening engine between sites, you just know that both sites are accessing the same listening engine. 
Gotcha. Okay, and then Earl was asking, will it schedule posts into the future? I think he just said it in draft mode, but I, maybe, Scott, you can also schedule with it, but I mean, I would assume it's just done through WordPress, right? Yeah, that's the great thing why we really chose WordPress. You know, there's other curation tools out there, but we chose to kind of be very focused on WordPress first because it has all the publishing tools you need. So mm -hmm. we don't try to do, like, we have social sharing. So let's say we have a lot of people who use the listening engine to share content. Uh, it's always the last thing you should do. But we integrate with Buffer. So if I click on this, I'm sharing this story on Buffer. And we don't try to duplicate what Buffer does. They do a very good job. So this story that I'm sharing right now is being pushed out to all my social accounts. Once again, it's being tracked to my listening engine. If I click refresh here, that story won't show up because I shared it. So mm -hmm. I've interacted with that piece of content. So, um, you know, we, we, what we try to do, like we use CoSchedule on our sites. We try to use, we try to integrate as closely as possible with WordPress and other plugins as we can. And if another plugin does it better, we don't even try to touch it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we've answered a bunch of the. Um, guys, I, anybody listening, I'd put the link in there, but uh, I'm going to drop the link again on the page. By all means, check this out. I mean, you guys have seen how powerful this is. This is pretty awesome. This is something I personally use, so I'm, I'm kind of a curation suite fanboy, but <laughs> you've gotten to also see it uh, in action. So if you guys are interested, by all means, check it out. It's a yeah, it's an awesome I, product. I haven't seen, you know, it's it's crazy because I did the, the content for the um, curation mastery course that we put out, but I had tested, I hadn't run across curation suite. I hadn't even known about it. For, you know, I've been curating for probably about four years now, maybe five, and um, and I've tried several of the tools like Kunani, what is it, Kunani or whatever it's called, the one by, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I've tried that. I've tried the Peter Peter Garrity used to have a plugin that would do it. I don't think he supports that anymore though. Um, and so eventually it just got around to just doing manual curation, and I trained all my virtual assistants to do that as well. And so my content marketing team just does manual curation using Feedly, and then going into WordPress and publishing, but. To see this in action now, like I can see my curators becoming a hell of a lot more efficient. 